In this video, we are going to learn how to solve thermodynamic problems using the van der Waals equation of state. At the end of this video, there is an example where we're going to look for pressure of a substance in certain conditions. And in order to be able to solve, we must know what the equation stands for and what the different variables in the equation are. So in the equation, in this equation, P stands for pressure, R stands for your gas constant, your T stands for temperature. Your T must always be in absolute temperature, so either Kelvin or Rankine. Your V is not volume, it's molar volume, so that's the unit volume over moles. And we also have two very special variables, which is your A and your B right there. Those you solve for using these two equations here that you have at the bottom. You solve for A using that equation, and you solve for B using that equation right there. In these two equations, we have the variable TC and the variable PC. TC stands for the critical temperature, and PC stands for the critical pressure. Both of those numbers are very specific and unique to the substance that you're using in that problem. So the critical temperature and the critical pressure for water are very different to the ones for nitrogen. So in order in order to look for in order to know what the critical temperature and the critical pressure are for the specific substance that you're using in your problem, you have to look them up either on your thermodynamic tables in the back of your textbook or simply looking them up on Google by searching up critical temperature of blank. And that blank is the substance that you're working on in your problem. Something that trips people up a lot when using the van der Waals equation is determining what R value you're going to use. Your R value must match the units that you are given or that you are looking for. Um, so... I would choose the first R value, 0 0.08206, if my volume is in liters, if my pressure is in atmospheres, and if my moles are in gram moles, and if my temperatures are in Kelvin. I would use this one, the 0 0.7302 gas constant, if my volume was given to me in, feet, in cubic feet or if my pressure was given to me in atmosphere, and if my moles were given in pound moles, and if my temperature was given in Rankine. Sometimes um, the values that are given to us in our problem statement does not match any of the gas constant um, units that we have here, so we will have to convert units to make sure that our um, problem statement units match the R constant or the gas constant that we use for our problem. So let's go ahead and let's work on our first example. Estimate the pressure of ammonia in kilopascals at 50 degrees Celsius with a molar volume of 0.1 meters cubed per gram mole using A, the ideal gas equation, and B, using the van der Waals equation of state. The ideal gas equation of state is PV equals NRT. I'm going to go ahead and write down all the information that I know and was given to me in my problem statement. I know that the substance that we're using is ammonia. I'm looking for pressure in kilopascals. My temperature given is 50 degrees Celsius, but we don't want it in Celsius, we want it in Kelvin. So it's equal to 293.15 Kelvin. And the molar volume was also given to me. So my V over N is 0.1 meters cubed per gram mole. Now I must determine what R value I'm going to use. And in order to determine the which R value, I have to 
compare and match the units that are given to me to some of the units from the R constant table. So I want my R constant to have, or my R value to have the units of Kelvin because that's the units my temperature is given at. I will like the volume to be in meters the moles to be in gram moles, and hopefully my pressure to be in kilopascals. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for an R value that matches those units. So let's start from the beginning. So I'm not, I'm obviously not gonna use any of the first R values because the pressure in these R values is in atmospheres, so none of those. And also volumes don't match, like liters and stuff. But I see here this gas constant, the 8.314. It has volume of meters cubed, so that's good because that matches the one in my problem statement. The pressure is in pascals, but kilopascals and pascals are pretty easy to convert to and from. So I think I'm going to be okay with my pressure given in pascals. And my moles are given in gram moles, so that's good. And also my temperature in my problem statement is given in Kelvin, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 8.314 gas constant in order to solve for P. So going back to my problem. I'm going to write down the gas constant I chose. I chose 8.314. I'm going to go ahead and write down the units of my gas constant. I like writing the units because if I ever forget the units I was solving for, it's again there in my gas constant. So we're, I'm going to start plugging things into my... PV equals an RT equation. I see that I have um, my R constant, my temperature. However, they don't explicitly tell me what the volume or the number of moles that ammonia has. However, they do give me my molar volume, which is V over N. So I can manipulate my ideal gas equation of state to be in terms of molar volume. And I do that by dividing by N on both sides. And getting P, or the pressure times the molar volume, equals R times the temperature. And that's great, because we do have the temperature, we have the R constant, and we also have our molar volume. So in order to solve for P, we're going to do RT divided by our molar volume. And now we can actually just plug things in. My R constant is, or my R value is 8.314. My temperature is 29315. And we're going to divide all of that by our molar volume, which is 0.1. After plugging that into a calculator, we get that the pressure is 24,372. 0.491 pascals and it's pascals because the gas constant that we used to solve had pressure equal to pascals. However, our problem statement asks us for pressure in kilopascals. So we'll just convert it into kilopascals. So this is the same thing as saying 24.37 kilopascals. So this is the pressure of ammonia in these states determined by using the ideal gas equation of state. So let's go ahead and find pressure using the Van der Waals equation of state. We know the equation. We just learned what it was. And also a reminder that that V is not volume, it's molar volume. Alrighty. In order to solve for pressure, we still need to solve for A and B. 
I know that my equation for A is this one right here. And we also will have to solve for B, and this is the equation for B. Nothing too difficult. In order to solve for A, I will need my critical temperature of ammonia. Again, this is tabulated for me at the end of the book. And for me, the critical temperature is 405.6 Kelvin. And my critical pressure is 112.77 bar. You can look these up on Google or look them up in your own um, textbook at the end in your thermodynamics tables. Now I want to go ahead and solve for A. I have my TC and my PC value. However, I also need my R value. I want my R value to still be the same as I used for my ideal gas equation of state. And that R value had volume being in meters cubed, so that's good because my volume is still in meters cubed. It had my moles being gram moles, my temperature to be in Kelvin, and that's good because my TC matches that as well, my TC is in Kelvin. However, my PC unit bar does not match the Pascal that's in my R constant. So I have two options. I can either look for another, look for another gas constant that has bar, meters cubed, gram moles, and Kelvin, which maybe there probably isn't one, or I can simply convert my 112.77 bar into Pascal, which is what I'm gonna do. So 112.77 bar is equal to 11,277 kilopascals, which is equal to 11,277,000 pascals. Great. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my R value so that I can have it here, which is, which is 8.314 in the units meters cubed times pascals over gram moles kelvin. Finally, I think I have all the different units that I need to solve, or all the different variables, all the different parts to solve for A. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug everything in. So A is equal to 27. My R, we decided was 8.314. Critical temperature was 405.6, all of this squared, divided by 64, and my critical pressure, again, it's not going to be the bar one, it's going to be the Pascal's, so that it matches my R constant, so 11,277,000. When you plug that into your calculator, you're supposed to get 0.42 by 4 and now we go ahead and solve for B we plug everything in our 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 R is 8.314 our TC is 405.6 and then our PC again not in bar in Pascal's because we want it to match our R constant is 11,277,000 when you go ahead and plug that into your calculator, you get 3.7379 times 10 to the negative 5. Finally, we have our A and our B, so we can plug it into our actual van der Waals equation, which is that one right there, to finally solve for P. So P is equal to our R constant. 8.314 times our temperature, and that temperature is the temperature given, and in Kelvin, not in Celsius. So 293.15 
divided by our molar volume, 0.1, minus our B, 3.7379 times 10 to the negative 5, minus our A, which is 0.4254, divided by your molar volume squared. After plugging that into your calculator, you're supposed to get 24,339.0346. And this is in Pascal's because our R constant or our R value is in Pascal's. Our problem statement specifically asked us for kilopascals. So we can convert this into kilopascals. So our final answer will be 24.339 kilopascals. And that's the pressure of ammonia in these conditions using the Van der Waals equation of state. Also, if we compare what we got for the pressure using the Van der Waals equation of state, and we compare it to what we got for pressure using the ideal gas equation, we can say that ammonia under these conditions behaves similar to an ideal gas, since both pressures are really similar and close to one another. So this is it for example number one. I will go ahead and solve other examples that are a little bit harder because they don't explicitly like tell you what the molar volume is or we won't solve for pressure or we're going to have to solve for temperature or for volume. So make sure you look out for those videos.